I built a guitar for my daughter and she absolutely hated it. It turns out that preteen girls do not like guitars that weigh more than 10 pounds. I don't like guitars that weigh more than 10 pounds. I'm a preteen girl. Who knew? I have drilled a hell of a lot of holes in this instrument and uh, saved quite a chunk of weight. I haven't uh, revealed just how much just yet. Uh, that was part of the guessing game in episode one of this two-part series. I'm going to remove even more. I have got space underneath the scratch plate. I'm going to rewire the scratch plate because the wiring was shoddy from many, many years ago when that was uh, originally wired. And uh, we're going to completely refinish the instrument as well. Now, I've spoken with my daughter and uh, she's not going to let me burn it. I'm enjoying this one. I really am. Ha <laughs> yay! She likes the name of the guitar. Slushius. Uh, we actually quite like the finish, the purple to blue. And uh, we've got these internals now. So I think we're going to keep the original outside and go as bright a pink as humanly possible for inside the holes. Should be fun. Let's uh, see how much more weight I can remove, shall we? So this wiring loom came out of a guitar that I'd made many, many, many years earlier. And uh, it's been, well, the, the, the wiring is shoddy at best, embarrassing at worst. Okay, so this line of holes goes all the way under, and I think that's just, that's, that's fine. I would like to add some more here, really. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use this to mark them out. I know where the positions are now. I can see from the gaps there where they're supposed to be. That's fine. I don't want any more visible holes along this area here because that's where the wire goes, etc. It's not a problem. But I am going to drill quite a chunk out of here. Um, I might even use a router. I've even considered changing that beautiful scratch plate that does need a repair it's cracked over time, uh, with a Perspex one, so I could drill more holes all the way through. But uh, I have this set up with just a single humbucker, and I've got routes for all of this. Yeah, making this whole pattern go across the whole instrument is not, it's not a tenable situation. I do love the 3D effect that we get with this. I really do. Off the edge. One of the best things about this workshop is the view. That's better. <laughs> I'm at Crimson, we're playing with laser cutters. We've just made a template so that I can just route this because, frankly, it's easier. The difficult part of making 25 mil circles, and we need like 100 of the damn things. We're going to do them in veneer, just to hide all of these little uh, dots and holes and things left by the force in the bits. Because, you know, why not? I even have some uh, flame ash veneer, which, funnily enough, this guitar is made out of flamed ash. Oh, let's start burning veneer. Oh, yeah. Probably best move this, shall I? Put it in the bin for now. Yeah. Why not? Got to zero it properly. This is when you don't want the laser firing.
Oh, that was pretty good. That looks pretty good. Let's see how they fit. Well, I'd say that's perfect. That's perfect. Who needs holes in a guitar anyway, hey? And here we are back at the studio. So uh, yeah, I have access to everything that Crimson Guitars has and CXDs and lasers and, and people and stuff. And uh, yeah, in this case, why not? If I'm making a guitar as spot on as possible, I might as well cover those holes up with them. Yeah, templates are, are my least fun thing to make. So <laughs> onwards. Well, there's a hundred holes here. I've just run a few tests and uh, it's all good. I need to sand both sides of the um, of the discs down, which I should have done pre-lasering it. Of course, I have learned my mistake. Uh, the reason I didn't cut the three, cut the exact shapes out uh, is due to the fact that some of them have got the, the proper shape in there and others don't. With veneers this thin, it's easy enough to use a scalpel blade and be done with it. After running a few tests, we have what we want. It's gonna look good. Doesn't that look better? I actually, I really like the addition of the veneers and the, uh, the added 3D look that we've got there, but I'm not gonna, uh, not this time around. Now, <clears throat> there was the question last week of how much material I have removed so far with, with all of these holes. And I said that uh, if you got close, I would uh, give a, a discount coupon or a prize or some sort. So many of you answered that, uh, quite frankly, if you're watching this video, you deserve uh, a discount. I'm going to do a mini flash sale kind of a thing. There's a coupon flashing on your screen right now. Anything apart from a three month course on crimsonguitars.com, uh, you will get a 15% discount period as long as it's in stock. Uh, to answer the question, I have removed so far, the body on its own started out at six, point, six pounds seven ounces, and it is now four pounds eight ounces. There we go, I'm reading just to make sure. We've lost, well, 1.9 pounds. One pound, nine ounces, not 1.9 pounds. It's a hell of a lot of material. God, check it out. Whoop, four pounds eight. And what is that in 4.55 pounds currently? Two kilos. Isn't that cool? And I've got a lot more routing to do still. I've taken what was going to be a quick project and turned it into something else. It seems to happen to me quite a lot. Anyway, uh, at this stage, I'm just gently, with 240 grit sandpaper, going to sand the inside of every single one of these 80-ish holes. And uh, a number of you suggested in the last video that uh, maybe it would look good with a hex pattern. I agree. So that shot that I just took of the, 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 the guitar just sitting on the bench there nicely, uh, fine. I then flipped over, took a photograph, and the guitar fell off the bench. This is the first time in years I've dropped a guitar. 
and uh, some of you were questioning the strength and stability of this construction because obviously I've removed a lot of weight. What I haven't removed is any stability. Wood is strong, like stronger than you could imagine. I've got, well, as I said in the comments of the first video, your average acoustic guitar has sides that are made, they're about two millimeters thick or thin. And uh, well-supported wood in this case is, it's gonna survive anything you can throw at an average guitar, for sure. Am I embarrassed? Yes, but uh, we're fine. <laughs> Let's not drop another guitar, shall we, though? <sighs> Pretty. Anyway, let us start marking out our hex pattern, shall we? And uh, there are several options. Option number one, take the guitar, spray it with grey undercoat, and then draw what I want to draw straight on there. Uh, the problem with that is that I would then be spraying undercoat into all of these holes, and I don't want that. Uh, option number two is, well, masking tape, again. No, I do not have stocks in any masking tape companies. I do, however, have stock in a company that likes making holes in random guitars. No, it doesn't really have to be applied quite so precisely, but you know, this is me. You know what, this is going to take a long time, but there is a better way. I'm just going to use the sculpting blade. I'm really rather happy so far. It took a while, but we've got an interesting thing going on. As you look at it, you can see that uh, creating the, the divots has made little flower shapes going from hex to circle. And I think it's quite cool. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Did I ruin it and am I taking it back? suppose it depends what I do with the stain. Now the back. I don't need to bevel these edges over. I think with a little bit of sandpaper, that'll do, that'll do everything I need. Just relax the edges, just a fraction. All right, 
four pounds, seven ounces. I've removed another ounce by carving the hexagons out. Let's, uh, let's take a little bit further. We made a routing template uh, at Crimson on the, uh, on the laser cutter. And essentially what I want to do is a route away as much of this as possible. Now, somebody else suggested in the comments that I could, from the back, drill a number of holes and just not go all the way through. But um, the thing I love, and that would work, from the front you wouldn't see it, it would say, wait, but I love this 3D effect. I love the, well, I love what that looks like. So uh, I'm gonna take it from this side. Masking tape and super glue. Super glue on one side, accelerator on another. It should go off pretty much immediately. And what we have is a very, very strong template hold, better than double-sided tape, which sometimes tends to slip, that is also very, very easy to pull off. So it's strong with sideways pressure, very easy to pull off in that vertical manner. Just clean it up a little bit. I feel like I haven't used a router in ages, and that's because I haven't used a router in ages. Weird. Isotunes. Isotunes link aware. I can hear what's going on around me while protecting my hearing from this thing. <laughs> Always check the depth stop is perfect. And I'm starting with a smaller cutter. It's only taking half inch, uh, maybe even smaller than a half inch cut. Small cuts. Where are we going? Come on, that'll do. It'll do nicely. Dust mask, extraction, important things. What we've got here is the ability to route right through into the trim cavity if we want to. I'm not gonna do that. Under here, that's the spring. Do you know what? It makes no difference. I'm gonna remove as much weight as possible. I am just gonna route away. Routy, routy. And uh, the springs will be, uh, the, the scratch plate, the rear of the scratch plate will be visible through from the spring cavity, but that doesn't make any difference. It's fine, we're all good. Fight me in the comments. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so, masking tape and super glue, it'll just pull straight off. Like so. I have the, uh, uh, many of you will have noticed, I've just routed through where the screws that hold the trim spring bar thing in. I've routed all the way through that, so those are gonna to need to be uh, fixed in, I'm gonna need longer screws basically, and those will have to be screwed into the uh, end of the neck block, basically, which is fine. I can do that before I put the scratch plate on. 
So I'm not happy with that ledge there. I'm going to tidy this up just a little bit. Say so that that ledge there, it's just, just not quite clean enough. So uh, yeah, a little bit more routing and then uh, we're done. So carving the, well, drilling all of these holes and carving hex things, etc., saved two pounds exactly out of uh, the, the total weight of this instrument. And uh, leaving us four pounds, seven ounces as we measured just now. Let's see what that great big cavity has done. Three pounds, 11 ounces. It's nearly a whole pound more. So this body now has gone from six pounds, seven ounces to three eleven. It's not bad. Not bad at all. 1.696 kilograms. I can get down with that, can you? Um, okay. It's gonna affect the sound. We've basically made a semi-acoustic strat electroacoustic, semi-hollow, one of those terms. It's late, I'm tired, I need my dinner or coffee, or both. <laughs> I think that's super cool. So 10.5 pounds, 6.7, it was 6.7 pounds, it's at 3 pounds 11, 6 pounds 7 ounces minus 3 pounds 11 ounces. The answer is 2.75 pounds. There we go, in metric. We have saved two and three quarter pounds off the total weight of this instrument. Uh, it was uh, 10.5 pounds. So it is gonna be, I'm not even gonna trust myself with that now. It's under eight pounds, 7.75. Seven and three quarter pounds is roughly what we're gonna end up with. Uh, as the final instrument once all of this is back on. This scratch blade looks gorgeous. I like the juxtaposition of natural burl, that I think it's Amboina burl, versus the purples and the blues and the hex and all that jazz, and I like it. I also have had the thought that potentially I could do a really super cool custom inlay into the wood, a prismatic geometric crow with the crow family, or some pinstriping, or I don't know, something just to make it even more special and fun to watch. Another option is I can ditch this scratch plate, make a custom copper scratch plate, and we can patinate the heck out of it. Blues and browns and reds and ochres and stuff. That could be fun too. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments below. This is, of course, as many of you thought, turning into a three-parter. No more than a three-parter, I promise. So, let's get a shimmy on, shall we? <sighs> more sanding, okay. That got old quite quickly. Zada. We're sticking with a purple, blue, pinky kind of a thing. With a little bit extra thrown in tomorrow. So on with the staining, I'm using a mixture of water-based and spirit-based Crimson Guitars stains. These are available at crimsonguitars.com. And uh, they rule. Start with them black, actually. Water-based. And we'll sand back a little bit of this before we apply the next layers.
as that's uh, pretty much dried now. I'm gonna try and smoothly sand it off a little bit. See what I'm going for? This is going to be fairly subtle when we uh, get to the end. Next up, I'm going to go crazy with the spirit-based pink. This is... This is an awesome colour. I'm going to paint it inside every single one of these holes. It's going to take a little while. Before I do that, I'm going to open all the windows. As I'm getting to this stage, I'm not actually loving it. I think a spray booth may well be required. Let's see. Yeah, in this light I'm not loving this pink. It's not really doing what I'd hoped it would. Uh, I'm going to carry on staining, but I assume I'm going to be painting over all of it tomorrow. More pink as a base. Actually, um, it might work. It might work. Okay. Okay, actually this, this could do, this could do. So that was a spirit-based pink stain. This is a water-based royal blue. And if you put a water-based stain over a spirit-based stain, they don't mix together. There's a, a very subtle sort of, you basically get a bit of both. You also get purple. <laughs> it's just, Let's just see where we go. Trying to apply it quite dry. Okay, what we've, what we've ended up here is a strange amalgamation of what the guitar originally was. Her name is, or its name is, Slushius. I will not dare to presume the sex of anything. It was originally stained, it was originally finished, and anybody who's ever done this before will know that you... restaining something after the fact is 
problematic. You've already had a finish on there. It's going to come out blotchy. The level of blotchiness is what you have to worry about. And, and to be honest, that's actually, that's not bad. And it's not a bad look. It's, again, it's kind of like my Cyberpunk 2077 build. It's a, it's a, well, this is basically another Cyberpunk build, I suppose. I'm not happy. I think it could. I could leave it here. I could. I could go into the spray booth tomorrow, shoot a coat of quick-drying polyurethane varnish on it, and be done. But I would forever be disappointed. It's going to take a few weeks, maybe even a month. Come back for episode three. You will not be disappointed. I'm going to take this instrument into the spray booth and I am going to do the whole thing properly. It is going to look incredible. I hope. Anyway, look, please let me know in the comments below just how massively you think I've screwed this guitar up to this point, or whether you actually like this finish and think I should leave it as such. Um, I think that, well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy, and, and that's, that's all that counts, really. Um, let me know what color you think I should go for. I am erring towards uh, a color changing flip-flop, changing from sort of blue to purple, which was the original colors of the instrument. Uh, maybe with, as I attempted here, ultra bright pink inside of the cavities. So a combination, basically what we've got here, but done in solid colors. Um, yeah. Bets on how much weight you think we're going to add to the instrument with the addition of all of that lacquer. I'm going to weigh this in grams just for fun. There's dust everywhere. As it stands with stain, etc., we are 1.684 kilograms. We've lost over a kilogram in weight so far. How much are we going to add through adding lacquer? Let me know your guess in the comments below, and if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. Please hit like if this has interested you in any way, shape, or form. But most importantly, please don't hate me. The end result will be superb. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.